Today I'm going to talk to you about sins, basically the sins of other people and the effect they have on us. You know, other people's sins attach themselves to us, whether we like it or not. Uh, they drag us down and can hold us back from uh, achieving what we what our true potential, what we want to do what we may want to do and they can also persuade us to do sinful actions to others such as peer pressure if you're in a group of people and they go around making fun of each other or other people then you would feel pressured into doing that yourself because that is uh, that group's sociably acceptable way. It's socially acceptable to them because they all do it. Whether or not it's right, whether or not it's just in jest, or said to be in jest, who knows, but it does have the potential of hurting people. Sure, people can turn around and say, well, toughen up, get a fixed skin, or whatever. Uh, but that's the way society goes these days in order to make things more sociably acceptable than they are. And then, after a period of time, it then becomes politically incorrect. But that's another time, another matter. So sins, what do they do? They dissuade us from doing godly actions. You know... Going back to with this group of people, you know, it could be anyone, it could be people at work, people you hang around with, people you uh, you're just in college of people you just know, or uh, people you just pass on the street. You know, those groups of people who do these sorts of things are seeking an identity. And one way of attempting to find that identity is to make other fe people feel sad, upset, hurt. Because it's in our nature uh, for us to feel better when we see someone else suffer. You know, it's a bit like when you win a race. Some people gloat over the people who've lost, you know, the term sore loser. Yeah, sore loser, sore winner. You know, someone who wins and then has to rub it into the, the person or the people who have lost. Uh, let's say, sinful action. Make people feel worse than they already need to feel because they've already lost. <laughs> <laughs> they lost to the better person. But uh, is the person who's the winner and the sole winner, is he the better person or is she the better person for then making someone feel worse off just so that the winner then has a greater sense of feeling better? Does that make sense? Now the problem with sins, especially when we're on the receiving end of them for whether verbal, physical, mental, many other states of sins. You know, there are many sins out there. I can't really go around categorizing them all, but for this case, when I'm talking about sin, I'm talking about something that you know is wrong. You know that when someone's been sinful for you, it hurts you, and that when you commit sin, you're actually being hurtful to other people, whether you mean to or not. For those who sin against us, you know, do us wrong, you know, this is where I go back, where it drags us and holds us back. It makes us feel worse, you know. It's not making us feel better, it makes us feel worse. Someone else has put their sins onto you to make you feel worse, to burden you with it, to make them feel better. 
Now the problem is that that person's not going to be feeling much better for for any length of time really. Might be a short amount of time, might be a day, a couple of hours, maybe a few minutes. But for that person affected, that's going to affect them for a much longer time. Months, years, decades even. And this is the most difficult thing that anyone can do. But is the primary step here. You know, you need to be able to forgive. And the reason why is, what else can you do? You can be a heathen, gentile, barbarian, whichever term you want to go with. Uh, gentile is a new terminology used in the Bible. But it just basically means heathen or barbarian. They've just made it sound nicer. <laughs> to soften it up a bit. So, I forget where I was at now. Exactly, that's where I was going. So to be able to forgive, you know, it is difficult because what are the options otherwise to attack the person back? For us to speak in self-pity? Making us reflect on the hurtful comments made or the hurtful actions done to us to make us feel worse about ourselves doesn't help now to forgive truly mean to forgive literally to forgive that person for what they have done and to not bring it up again you know may not be forgotten you know some people would have had sin committed against them and they could never forgive uh, forget and they may say they can never forgive, but they are being burdened by that, and that holds them back. And I'm not saying it's easy, I've uh, had a lot of forgiving t to do. I still have an amount to do, and even still have some forgiveness where I thought I'd already forgiven, but it comes back up. But what I realise is that when you do forgive, it releases you, you know, those sins... You know, if they fall off you, you feel lighter, you can move forward. You know, you're not being dragged down anymore, you can lift up, you can move on. And what is happening at that point is that allows you to gain your identity, to find an identity, to move forward, to push on doors, because... If you don't push on doors, you're just standing still. You know. There'll be people out there in this world, and I've been one of them, who sat around and done nothing for a very long periods of time, achieved nothing. And that was from being wallowing self pity, uh, not being confident in themselves. You know, I'm not confident to move forward and try something new because. If they failed, they'll feel worse about themselves. But with God, you know, He wants you. God loves us. He does not want us to wallow in self-pity. He has His plan. He knows your identity. And He wants you to find that identity out for yourselves. Because He has His plan. And His plan may not be what we expect it to be. And could certainly surprise us. But he has a plan for each and one of us. And we have a duty to ourselves. If not also our faith in God. To go and. Attain that. You know to achieve. To learn our true identity. And by doing that. You know we have to do that through godly actions. You know we have to stop. Sinning ourselves. And we have to stop. The sins of other people from weighing us down. To say to stop from sinning is very difficult to say, you know, do, but it's something that you have to be constantly aware of. You know, that when you sin, or if you do sin, you know, you didn't sin on purpose. You know, that you hold your tongue, hold back yourself from doing something that 
would cause harm to someone else that you know would do it. You know, thinking before you act. You know, there's not one person out there on this planet who hasn't sinned. There's only ever been one person ever in the entire existence of mankind who has never sinned. And that's Jesus Christ, the Lord himself. 